each of those earlier generation day, graduation days. And on the banner of the class of 2016, we selected the silver, teal, and black class colors is added to that proud long line. Commencement is the culminating event of the academic year. Today we honor the achievements of the graduates at the close of a long period of study and preparation. We are assembled to congratulate the members of the class of 2016 and for conferring degrees upon them. We are honored today with the presence of Most Reverend Edward C. Melissa, the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Greensburg, Sister Catherine Minor, Provincial Superior and President of the Sisters of Charity of Seton Hill, the Honorable James J. Ridge, First Secretary of Homeland Security and former Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and members of the Seton Hill Board of Trustees. We welcome as well members of the Seton Hill University faculty and administration, parents, families, and friends of the graduates. And of course, the graduates themselves, class of 2016. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy and almighty God, we come together this morning to watch these soon-to-be graduates move forward as they commence, as they continue on their pilgrimage through life. We are grateful for your many blessings, and the blessings that our students have come to know here on this hill and below in our town of Greensburg. All of us thank you for having brought them to this day of completion. They have learned here that moving forward, despite its hazards, is the best direction to take, hazard yet forward. We're grateful for the inspiration of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Her example pervades the spiritual geography of this university through the lives of the Sisters of Charity of Seton Hill, past and present. We ask you to fill our celebration with joy, to supply our hearts with love, and to give our future hope. May what we dream this morning be made possible tomorrow by your help. As we gather to listen, and learn from each other once again. We pray that those who speak to us will challenge us, inspire us, and strengthen us. May your living word speak to us and help us to be grateful, loving, and wise. In particular, God, we pray for Michelle Ridge, our distinguished alumna, who will share herself, her experience, and her devotion to this university let your Holy Spirit rest upon her, that she will speak in unison with your will. We also pray that you bless our president, Dr. Mary Finger, and her staff, our professors, and the board that guides us. Bless all who work to make this university a place of welcome, learning, and creativity. May your hand rest on our guests today, come powerfully into the hearts of our parents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, all of our relatives and friends. Let them enjoy excitement and natural pride at our achievement. Holy Spirit, come upon our students who have called this university their home for four years, or perhaps more than four years, for those who changed their majors once or more times. We pray that all of us will reflect the face of Jesus today 
in our kindness, gentleness, mercy, compassion, commitment to the truth, and obedience to your will until the day we die. Descend upon us now and remind us that all of us are your children, your beloved sons and daughters. And so on this day before Pentecost, we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. St. Elizabeth in Seton, pray for us. Amen. Good morning. I join Marshall Jeske and Bishop Molesic in welcoming you to today's commencement exercises and in congratulating the 98th graduating class of Seton Hill University. All of us here at Seton Hill are proud of your accomplishments and we join with your family and your friends in celebrating you and recognizing you today. I welcome now to the podium Mrs. Michelle Rich. <laughs> Michelle Moore Ridge, you are one of Pennsylvania's most revered public servants. Your name, synonymous with political intelligence, insight, compassion, integrity. Indeed, you are a woman of strong social conscience, sincere concern for others, and unassuming leadership, and you make things happen. Troubled by the rates of violence and abuse facing our state's children as First Lady of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, your top priority was the prevention of violence against youth. You chaired the Governor's Community Partnership for Safe Children and later the Vision of Hope Advisory Council, which launched into a national child abuse prevention campaign. Your continuing role with Vision of Hope has helped the agency achieve private gifts and grants totaling more than $1 million for critical research, effective prevention strategies, and the promotion of adult responsibility and accountability to prevent child abuse. Your vision for children and families, coupled with your persuasion, also brought forth the multi-million dollar construction of the Erie County Public Library along Erie's waterfront. Your service on the National Nurse Family Partnership Board of Directors provides governance, stewardship, and leadership to help that organization accomplish its goals of transforming lives through the power of relationships as your efforts advance the agency's particular goal of helping low-income, first-time mothers and their children improve their long-term health and wellness prospects. Likewise, your work as a member of the Children's National Health System, Children's Health Board, helps prevent outcomes for children, improve outcomes for children, while supporting the creation of innovative solutions to pediatric health challenges. Throughout all you have done, your steadfast devotion to your beloved Seton Hill remains at the fore. Appointed the first alumna chairperson of the Seton Hill University Board of Trustees in 2013, your leadership advanced Seton Hill at a tremendous pace. During your tenure as chair, Seton Hill collaborated with local leaders and legislators to renew the city of Greensburg while addressing university needs. Experienced a significant building campaign resulting in the construction of this building, the Catherine Mavis McKenna Center, the Performing Arts Center, the Seton Hill Arts Center, and the Joanne Woodyard Boyle Health Science Center and you helped us enter into a strategic partnership with the Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. A distinguished daughter of Pennsylvania and a distinguished alumna of Seton Hill, you have received several awards for your work in education, including the Council for the Advancement and Support of Education Robert L. Payton Award and the Association of Independent Colleges and Universities 
Robert P. Casey Medal. Michelle Moore Ridge, your vision, wisdom, and fortitude have steered Seton Hill forward in the best tradition of the university's founders, the Sisters of Charity, and its namesake, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Your life embodies what we mean when we say that a Seton Hill education leads to the creation of ethical and productive members of society committed to transforming the world. We are proud to recognize you and present you with the Seton Hill University Medal of Distinction. Good morning, everyone. I was looking for my class banner. I can't find it, but I want to tell you the class of 2016 has an awesome banner, an awesome banner. So thank you, President Finger, for the very generous introduction. And I would like to acknowledge the Bishop of Greensburg, the Most Reverend Edward Malisek, Sister Catherine Minor, Minert, Provincial Superior and President of the Sisters of Charity of Seton Hill, the distinguished trustee colleagues, esteemed Seton Hill University faculty and administrative leadership, alumni, parents, grandparents, friends, and of course, the wonderful class of 2016. It is truly an honor and privilege for me to be here with you this, this, this morning. I am grateful for the citation President Finger read just a few moments ago. I am both honored and humbled to accept the university's Medal of Distinction. This recognition is dear to me, my heart is full, and I am deeply touched to receive it. I accept it on behalf of my class of 1969, which also includes our honorary classmate, Sister Mary Janet Ryan, who is here somewhere in the audience, and I just want to give her a hello. In preparation for this wonderful occasion, I thought about how I came to Seton Hill to be a, a student at Seton Hill. Oh, there she is. There she is. It's always wonderful to have a classmate here to support you. Um, as a result of my father's military career, my brother Bill and my sister Maureen and I lived throughout the United States and for some time abroad. My family returned to Erie, Pennsylvania during my junior year of high school, so I stayed there through my graduation from Strong Vincent High School in 1965. By that time, we had lived at 21 addresses and I had attended four high schools. So I was looking to make a connection someplace. Like some of our graduating seniors today, I was the first generation in my family to attend college. In the mid-1960s, there was no common application process, so applying for admission to colleges, to more than one or two colleges, was difficult and expensive. Because I wanted to stay in Pennsylvania for my studies, but not in Erie, my parents allowed me encouraged me to consider two schools. Well, I have long since forgotten the other school on my list, because driving up Seton Hill's impressive tree-lined road, I was captivated. Thank you to the Sisters of Charity. Um, I couldn't wait to see what was at the top of the hill. I was a little, a little intimidated by it, and I, know immediately, I knew immediately this was the place for me. Can, can you imagine, before ever meeting a, a single solitary soul on the campus, I knew S Seton Hill would be my choice and would be my home for the next four years. The fact that I made the right choice was affirmed again and again throughout my time as an undergraduate. Like students today, I had the joy of being taught by several, more than several, amazing professors. Sister Mary Schmidt, who we called Sister Thecla in those days, led a wonderful French novel course. Sister Colette Toller offered several challenging semesters in American literature. Jean Saracini's intense acting course 101 helped build my confidence, but it also affirmed that I should always stay behind, behind the scenes where I'm very comfortable. 
Sister Mary Janet Ryan, who I just uh, called out to, was certainly a favorite for this history major, and she would be ultimately become a member of our class. And last but not least, Sister Ann Infanger. I pause when I mention Sister Ann because she continues to serve on the faculty. She is a legendary biology professor and now theology professor. Sister Ann's biology class stretched my academic muscles and gave me a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I cannot remember that I remember the feeling as though I had achieved a great moral victory when I earned a B plus in that course. And I have to thank Sister Ann because just a few weeks ago I was in the genetic research lab at Children's National Medical Center in Washington and this um, metabolic research doctor had these plastic beads and he was talking to us about chromosomes. Thank you, Sister Ann. I sort of knew what he was talking about. <laughs> And like many of our students today, I made great friendships during my years at Seton Hill, friendships that were fostered by the sisters and the faculty. You know, we had this wonderful tradition of enjoying having family meals uh, together in Low Dining Hall. I was a work-study uh, student server freshman year, and I ended up with uh, the responsibility of waiting on Sister Zoe Dorsa. Now, she was a member of the theater faculty. She was also the dean of women. And she was dramatic and sophisticated and had very high standards. So I was pretty intimidated by her. But she taught me a lot, and, and it was Sister Zoe who helped foster great conversations among my classmates, especially at mealtimes. In the true spirit of the liberal arts tradition, the sisters and our faculty taught us to respect those studying in other academic areas, to ask questions, to learn, and to listen. Some of my best, and I would tell you lifelong friends, were not in the same major with me. One survived the polio epidemic of the 1950s. Her twin brother did not. Jan Flood Nichols would go on to become an advocate for the eradication of the disease. She was a psychology major, and just last year in New York City, she was named a global citizen of the world for her work on behalf of immunization. Another, my roommate, the late Jane Farver, always passionate about the importance of the arts, became a renowned international curator and museum administrator who worked with artists around the world. Last fall, there was a tremendous memorial service for her at Cooper Union in New York City that was attended by artists from all over the world and museum professionals and her friends. And yet another classmate, Ronnie Froman, served in the US Navy for more than 30 years. She joined the Navy right after she graduated from Seton Hill. And she was the first woman to, uh, to command a naval base she retired with the rank of Rear Admiral and has continued careers with the American Red Cross, the San City of San Diego, and a Nuclear Projects Corporation. So you can see the class of 1969, you, you just had to be um, distinguished and, and, and moving forward as the bishop so eloquently prayed for us. As classmates, we recognized that we had different paths but we shared common values and interests. We made a connection, and I told you, I really needed to make a connection, and I found that purpose and that commitment and self-efficacy in my years here. And we were change agents. We wanted to make things happen. We wanted to be transformational, and our liberal arts competencies and experience helped us build on that. During my years as a public librarian, yes, I was a public librarian, but I didn't make people be quiet. Um, public servant and member of regional and national boards, I called on those competencies many times and managed tasks I never anticipated. And I learned that every, whatever experience you have, whether it's a paid professional, volunteer, whatever, you are going to learn, learn, learn. And you are going to continue to build, that's what's so great about liberal arts, background is that you really learn that path of life, light, the path of life that you have in your motto 
is this lifelong learning, which is going to be with you until you take your last breath. The words of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, the founder of the Sisters of Charity of Seton Hill, resonate for me today in such a powerful way. And she said, I quote, I would wish to fit you for the world in which you are destined to live, end quote. And I know that these words are familiar to all of you. It's very much a part of our Seton Hill culture and tradition to call on our, our wonderful patroness. Seton Hill certainly helped to prepare me for the world and help me work to seek opportunities where I could serve, where I could make a difference, and where I could be effective. Service is truly part of the ethos that is Seton Hill University. And it was foundational, a foundational part of, of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's experience and that of her beloved Sisters of Charity. And at this point, I also have to say, give my great thanks as a board trustee to Sister Catherine Minert and to Sister Vivian Linkauer. Both of these wonderful Sisters of Charity were provincial superiors during the, the 13 years, 15 years that I've been on the board. And I have to really credit them uh, with their inspiration. At Seton Hill, you've learned through the tremendous example modeled by the sisters, your faculty, your coaches, and certainly your peers, the importance of service. So during the course of the past academic year alone, many of you in the class of 2016 volunteered with a labor of love, Take the Day On, Habitat for Humanity Building Program, Programming for Students with Disabilities, Food Drives for the Local Community, Make-A-Wish Foundation programs, reading mentor programs through Big Brothers and Big Sisters, actually one of my very favorite organizations, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, international service trips during the January and May terms, and programs supporting the needs of the most vulnerable members of our community here in Western Pennsylvania. Perhaps what is really the most important about these initiatives is how they brought you together as a class, and as a community, you made that connection, how they helped you support each other and a cause you held up as significant. It was the Czech philosopher and statesman, statesman Vaclav Havel who wrote, quote, work for something because it is good, not just because it stands a chance to succeed. Service fosters a commitment to the common good. It really raises all of us, and service brings us joy Aren't we all more effective when we know the work we are doing makes something just a little easier for someone else? And believe me, you get back more than you give. At Seton Hill University, we work each day to do our part to keep service alive. It remains an integral part of our Catholic liberal arts heritage. So to the members of the class of 2016, I invite you to lean hard on your Seton Hill experience and stay connected. Continue to be models of Christian behavior. Recall your classroom conversations and cherish and maintain the friendships you've built. Look around you. All of these people here in this class of 2016 have, have helped support you. They have seen you at your best and worst and they've always given you back their best. So you are fortunate, we invite you to come back to the campus. We, we want you to be our great alumni leaders of the future. So thank you again for the good work you've done. I know you will do even more. And like the many graduates who've come before you, you leave this hill fit for the world in which you are destined to live and ready to transform it. And I know that this class of 2016 will again fulfill the Seton Hill tradition of transformation. So thank you very much.
thank you and good morning. Well, as the psalmist has reminded us, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that's so true. And we're not going to let a little rain <laughs> have any effect on us. <laughs> what a wonderful day for each of you. Most definitely for the class of 2016. But also for your families and for those who supported you through these many years. Who did so much to help you arrive at this moment of success. I welcome each of you to this day of celebration. The class of 2016 certainly has waited for this day, and we congratulate you on your achievements. I congratulate, too, Michelle Ridge, recipient of the Medal of Distinction from Seton Hill. Michelle, your alumna, former First Lady, and a true friend of Seton Hill University. Your life has emulated the values put forth by this institution and by its sponsors, the Sisters of Charity. Michelle, you provide for our students an example of a life lived in service to family, community, and faith. Like the founder of our community, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, who also founded the Catholic school system in the United States. And like Mother Aloysia Lowe, who established on this very spot in 1883, the academic institution that would evolve into the vibrant university we have today. Michelle, you know the meaning of sacrificing for the common good and of leading with grace and humor in good times and in challenging times. You, like Mother Ann Seton, and Mother Elwishan have contributed greatly to Seton Hill's legacy. You are a true daughter of Elizabeth Ann Seton. And Michelle, if you'll please come forward. It's a little heavy. Thank you, sister. And I gift you today with a statue of Mother Seton, engraved with the motto, Hazard Yet Forward. And you certainly have depicted that. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you for being a shining example to all of us today and to those students who will grace these hallways to come. Oh, thank you. Sir. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Catherine. We now come to a most important part of these proceedings. Will the candidates for, gra uh, the candidates for degrees please stand? By virtue of the power vested in the trustees of Seton Hill University by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, the university confers upon you the degrees you have earned and to which you are entitled. I now call on Sister Susan Yockham, acting provost, who will present the individual graduates. Sister Susan, will you please present the candidates for, for degrees?
Taylor Schmidt.
into the crowd, I see so many people that made today possible. First, our families. Whether you are here with us in person or in spirit, your love and support have gotten us to this point. We can always count on you to be there for us through the ups and downs of college. Thank you for everything you have done and continue to do for us. We would not have been able to do it without you. In the crowd, I also see all of our professors who have been like family too. They have challenged us, supported us, and seen us grow as students and as individuals over the years. To our professors, thank you for your guidance and for instilling in us the knowledge, skills, and abilities that will help us to achieve our dreams. There are even more people in this room who have become like family, and they are the ones who stayed up with us until the early hours of the morning talking about life, convinced us that the second cookie from the dessert table was necessary, <laughs> cheered us up when a test didn't go as well as we had hoped, and are the ones that will be in the memories that will last forever. As class of 2016 graduates, we are more than just classmates. We have also become family. Seton Hill creates the atmosphere where these lifelong relationships can be formed. I remember when I came back to campus after Christmas break, and Darren, the Director of Dining Services, who we all know and love, took us up there. <laughs> he greeted me with a big smile and said, welcome home. Even though I had just left my house a few hours earlier, the greeting was still very accurate. Seton Hill has become our home away from home. Even though our time here as students has come to an end, we can leave knowing that Seton Hill will always be the welcoming community we have grown to love. We will be welcomed back with open arms when we drive up the tree-lined hill as alumni. Our experience here has been unique and one that we'll never forget, and we are so fortunate that we are graduating with an additional home and family. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. We, this, is, this is your home, your second home, and we hope that you come back often and visit us and see all the different things that are gonna, we will stay the same at our core, but my guess is we'll probably see change uh, all around us as we continue to evolve as an institution. I'm always reminded at events like graduation, like graduation that there's no such thing as a self-made person. I don't think anyone in this room could say we've done it all on our own. And I want to thank, first of all, Michelle Ridge uh, for giving us that wonderful, inspirational talk. Michelle is an example of a Seton Hill graduate and she is, who has gone out to transform the world and continues to do so on a daily basis. She is a high, um, a high level to attain to, but I suggest and I hope that you all work hard to do the kind of work she's done throughout her life. Thank you, Michelle. And Michelle Malik mentioned this in her speech, but I think it's time that we actually ask the people who have been behind our graduates every step of the way from, from birth and before birth 
uh, to stand and be recognized. Will the parents of the graduates please stand? I suspect that we may have some spouses and children in, of, of our graduates in the room. Will the spouses and the children please stand and be recognized? <laughs> How about grandparents? Have we got a few grandparents in the room? ask them to stand, but there's a group of people here who have devoted the last four, or as Bishop Molesic indicated, possibly more than four years, to uh, help you along the way. They've presented lectures and labs, read and graded papers, overseen internships and research projects, offered valuable advice on career, helped you along the way in terms of your spiritual and faith life, and just plain made sure that you had fun. Would you please uh, join me in thanking the faculty and staff of Seton Hall. <laughs> Graduates, as you leave Seton Hill, I ask you to remember the words of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. She wrote, the front door, the back door, the side door, all the windows, upstairs and downstairs, open at your coming. Please know that you are always welcome at Seton Hill, that you leave behind a faculty and staff that celebrates your success and delights in the knowledge that you're prepared for the next phase in your lives. We wish you success in your careers, happiness in your personal lives, and blessings in your spiritual lives. We are proud of what you've accomplished and now challenge you as an alumni to do your part to transform the world in the tradition of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Con congratulations and Godspeed. You're all invited to attend the reception of all of these commencement exercises in the Little Dining Hall. Families and friends, please keep the graduates exit pathway clear to be able to meet the graduates after they recess to the receiving line. Please stand and join Kelsey Riker and Eric Wheelock in singing the alma mater of Seton University. Dearest Seaton Hill. 